Well, it's afternoon, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We gather here today to give thanks and praise to God for a godly mother. We thank you all for coming. Just for <clears throat> everybody's information, uh, our order of service for today is we're going to sing a song. Mother wanted us to sing to open the service. Uh, I'll try to start it. Then I'll have a few comments. I'm going to ask uh, Brother Carly to come up and do an opening prayer for us. And uh, <clears throat> then we're going to sing another song. Then Brother Terry's going to come and speak and have a closing prayer. When we go to the cemetery, uh, we're going to have a song. Brother Shane will have the closing comments. Uh, Brother Terry will do a closing prayer, and then we'll sing Land of Beauty. Uh, we're going to sing Happy Land at the Grave. I know several of the grandchildren had asked about that, so we won't sing that today at the graveside. Uh, <clears throat> so at this time, those who would like to sing, everybody is invited to sing. I think they're going to have the words around there somewhere. <clears throat> but uh, the singers will please stand. We'll try to, we're just going to sing this straight through and sing the chorus at the end. <clears throat> oh, sing to me.
be seated for just a moment. I want to open up a little bit differently than we normally would because my memory ain't what it used to be. But I want to just take just a moment and I want to say on behalf of our family, I want to express our thanks and gratitude to everybody for all that they have done for Mother. Uh, I, I think especially in our personal family, uh, Paula, she's been laden with the burden of making all the bad decisions and doing all the hard work. And she's been a champion at her duty that was put on her and we thank her and praise her for that, that God's give her such grace as that. I uh, want to thank uh, Music Funeral Home I want to thank Bayview Nursing Home. They have been a precious blessing in our life with Mother and her care in the last few years. So, uh, And I have a special thanks. It's very personal to me, to Mama's neighbors, her close community. They were always, when Mama, when Daddy died and Mama was living by herself and she had all them lonely moments, and we had good neighbors. And y'all know who y'all are, and y'all stepped up, and y'all did the duty of a neighbor for our mother, and we thank you, and we praise you for it. We just thank you. Uh, at this time, I'm going to ask Brother Carly to come forward and offer a prayer, and then I've got a few comments I want to make. Let's pray. Holy Father, we come before your throne. Humbly, Lord, so thankful and so blessed. Lord, you've met our need far beyond our expectations. We have so much to be thankful for. Lord, even for the trials that we've faced in our life, Lord, you put them there to grow us, to strengthen us, to prepare us for the hard times that were to come. But Lord, you place people around us who loved us. Who prayed for us and who led by example. Lord, we're so thankful for the life that Granny lived, for the love that she showed, for the grace that she offered. And Lord, we just want to thank you for what you've done for us. Lord, there's nothing we can do for ourselves that you've done it all for us. Lord, for your perfect plan of salvation, where you gave your only begotten son to die on that cross, to pay that sin debt that none of us could pay. And none of us are worthy. But, Lord, you made a way. And I know Granny would want everyone here to know you don't have to go to hell. God has made a way, and it's through his son, Jesus Christ. So, Lord, I pray that you'll just continue to bless this family. Lord, we have so much to look back on and to be thankful for. We have so much to look forward to. But, Lord, we thank you for the memories that you've given us. We thank you for the time together that you've given us. And I pray, Lord, that others will see the love of Christ through us and through the example that Granny set. Because, Lord, she lived a godly life. She loved you. Lord, she trusted you with everything that she had. And she just loved to study your word. I pray, Lord, that that will rub off on us, Lord, and that we'll, we'll, we'll live our life the way that she lived hers. Loving others, caring for others, and placing the thoughts and needs of others ahead of her own. Lord, thanks again for the the commitment that you made to her, and Lord, for the service that, that she uh, offered to you. Continue to bless it and use it to further your kingdom's work. Help us through these days to come, Lord. When we want to pick up the phone and talk to her, we want to go down there and see her. This side of heaven, we'll never be able to do that again. But Lord, there's an opportunity where we can share with her again, and we're looking forward to that. Forgive us, Lord, 
And help us always to keep our eyes on Jesus. In Jesus' name. Mama asked me a long time ago if I would do this, and I told her I'd try. The Lord blessed me with health and strength this morning, but right now I need his Holy Spirit anointing, and I asked y'all to pray for me. <clears throat> so. Y'all, many of y'all have expressed to me the same thing. Your mother was a sweet, kind lady. <laughs> Mama set an example for us children. I'll be the first to confess I fall way short. Because I, I, I pray that God will allow me to love everyone like he allowed mother to love everyone. She just was a special lady in that aspect. Um, I'm not going to try to preach. I want to give you mother's testimony that she gave to me. Uh, mother told me that when she was about 12 years old, her mama spent a lot of time talking to her about what was good and what was bad and about what hell was like. And, and she went to bed one night when she was about 12. And she said as she lay down in bed and she was laying there thinking and she, there was something that she knew was not good but she was wanting to do it really bad. And uh, she slept with it part of the night. <laughs> and then her conscience began to convict her. And when she got up, she did not do what she knew was wrong. But she got up with something she didn't go to bed with. She got up with a desire in her heart to do good. Now that was when mama was born again. She became a child of God that day. It was manifested in her life that she was one of God's children. She didn't begin her discipleship walk for a long time after that. But <clears throat> when she joined at High Bluff Church, she told me, she said, you know, I, I, I went to church that day and I did have, didn't have the foggiest clue that I was going to join the church. <laughs> she said, I was sitting there and said, and the next thing I realized, I was up there at the front giving the preacher my hand, telling him I wanted a home. <laughs> and they received her and fellowshiped her and all that. And after church was over, Aunt Zoe met us. Most of y'all probably know her. Uh, Aunt Zoe told Mama, said, uh, she had dreamed the night before, and she said, the Lord told me if I'd come to church today, I'd see a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> and she did. <laughs> and she did. Uh, at that time, Mother became a disciple of Christ. She's made her public profession of faith in the Lord and Savior. There's a difference in being a child of God and a disciple. A disciple is a professed follower of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, you can be a child of God, and you're going to heaven, but you sure go miss a lot of joy this side of there by not being a disciple. <clears throat> And she gave me a letter, or a, a writing that she wrote one time. Uh, I, I don't know just exactly when it was in her life. She didn't put a date on it, but I'm just going to read y'all what she wrote. She said, sometimes my heart gets so heavy 
my many sins seem will seek me down to rise no more. I worry about the welfare of my children. Will they see the way before too late or sink into a burning hell? The grandchildren so sweet, will they be tormented? Or will they sing praises to the true and the living God like their Uncle Freddie that died when a baby? And this was at a time, also, I do know it was at a time in Mama's life, in our family's life, when it was in a very low ebb. Uh, Daddy was not living the example that he had started out on. She said, Leon, who was, su who was once such a shining example, seems to have turned his back on all. I thank God that the time came when he could get his feet back on the right path before he left this old world. <coughs> <coughs> Sometimes I think my race is nearly run. run. I was allowed to see a city near at hand. I understood it was the celestial city. There's nothing like it in this world. And shortly after, I dreamed of seeing the Savior on the cross. He was so perfect. She said, I was in a valley on my face, trying to beg God for mercy. And she said, she didn't say who, she just said, they were singing as on the cross the Savior hung. And then he appeared in the heavens above, and he reached down his hand toward her. And then she woke up. She did say, if only I can hold that hand when my time comes to die. I believe that he reached out his hand to her. Mother lived what she believed. I had this one thought, you know, how is it that we know a person has been saved, that they've been made a child of God, they've been a disciple of Christ? And the first answer to that question is by the testimony of their life. I mean, your walks testify whether you're living for God or not whether you're living in self-will or not. You know, I, Clark gets in my way a lot of times. I hope y'all don't have as much trouble with him as I do. <laughs> <clears throat> but one evidence that's easily identifiable to us is found in 1 John chapter 3, verse 14. We know know that we have passed from death unto life if we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Now there's two points I want to make from this scripture. First off is, you know, Jesus, uh, when he was questioned about what is the great commandment? He said, you are to love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, thy mind, thy soul, thy strength. But he didn't stop there. And he said, the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. <laughs> Mama lived that commandment out before us. <clears throat> Oh, uh, I'd add to that. It does say after that, he that loveth not his brother abideth in death. 
and I testify to you this morning, if you have anger or hatred in your heart against any other person, it is an evidence that you are not a child of God because you are to live out the example of love that Christ Jesus, our Savior, left for us to follow. You cannot harbor hate in your bosom and say that you are a Christian because you're not living the life. I'll be the first to confess I've been guilty a few times in my life. But one thing Mother taught me, because she talked with me often, there have been very few people in Mother's life that caused her, caused her a lot of anxiety because she felt like they was mad at her about something. And she would tell me about it, and we'd talk about it, and she'd say, all we can do is pray for her. That's been good advice to me a lot of times in my life because I don't have the sweet personality my mama has. <laughs> I, my mouth gets me in more trouble than I get out of in a week. <laughs> so, <clears throat> But mama also learned something from her mama. Now, I'm guessing, I'm just having to guess at this now, but apparently... My brothers and sisters was a whole lot better than I was growing up. Because I didn't ever hear Mama talk to them like she talked to me. Because uh, <clears throat> about every time I got in trouble, <laughs> Mama was telling me what an awful place hell was. And, and, and she, she stressed what an awful place hell was and what an awful condemnation to believe that you was going to go to such a place as that. Till I got to where I weren't even comfortable standing around the fire. I mean, it, it, she put the fear of God and the fear of hell in my life. Now I want to say to all you parents out there, young and old, daddies and mamas, your children need to know that there is a hell. It is an eternal lake of fire. And all those that are not children of God are going to go to that place. Please drill that in their hearts and minds like Mama did me. And I am so thankful that she did because that... Just that thought of hell kept me out of so much trouble. <laughs> and I do thank her so much for it. <clears throat> <clears throat> Mama spent a lot of time worrying about her youngins and their eternal salvation. And we talked of it many, many times. And I finally told her one day, I said, Mom, I said, I think we all have given evidence that God has touched us in some way. We might not be living just like we ought to or just like you think we ought to, but, you know, I, I think all your children have been saved by God's grace. And, and she finally got easy about that. And I thank the Lord that she had that consolation when her time come to leave this world. <clears throat> now I'm going to say to my brothers and sisters, I stood up for y'all. <laughs> y'all better live up to it now. <laughs> Don't sell me out short. <laughs> I tell y'all these things about mama. And Mama indeed was a good woman. God blessed her to be a good woman. And all the praise that I might heap on Mama or anybody else, I want you to remember where it come from. 
Because until God put the desire in mama's heart to do good, she is just like all the rest of us. And the only thing that maimed her, tamed her uh, relationship with God through time was that Holy Spirit presence, Christ in you. That's what sustained mama. And that's why we can stand up here today and tell you that when mama took her last breath, I weren't present at that time, but when they called me, all I could say was, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because she ain't suffering no more. And I know where mama is today, and I believe y'all do too. She's with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I'll also tell you, Mama's salvation is not complete. Oh, how in the world can you say that? Well, you see, our Lord and Savior came to this world, and he died on the cross that we might have eternal remission of our sins. But before he left this world, he declared he's coming back. And what's going to happen when he comes back? <laughs> He's going to speak. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. That means them dead bodies that's laying out there in the grave are going to rise up. But they ain't going to come up sinful bodies like they went in there. <laughs> because of what Christ done... They going to rise up glorified immortal bodies made able to be forever in the presence of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. And that don't just apply to us that's here since Christ died and ascended back to heaven. It reaches back to the very beginning of time. Them people had sinful bodies just like men you've got. <laughs> But they're going to be raised up in immortal bodies and sinless bodies. And they're going to, so shall we ever be with the Lord, it says. But it also says to us that we which are alive and remain shall be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Our vile bodies are going to be put aside and they're going to be changed to sinless immortal bodies also. What a great and a glorious day. And then will our salvation be complete forever. I thank y'all for your time and attention. May God bless and keep you. It's my fervent and humble prayer. If you will please turn to uh, no vacant seats in heaven. <coughs> Started off in the wrong line. <laughs> Our hearts are filled with sorrow when Jesus calls to claim his own. A seat is here.
Good afternoon. I count it a blessing and a privilege to be able to stand here with y'all this evening. This dear sister, one of her neighbors that Brother Clark was talking about, told me last night, he said, if you help him with that funeral tomorrow, I said, well, the Lord's willing, and we're going to try. He said, well, you got the easiest job in the world. He said, because she's done preached her funeral, and that is so true. And you heard the word of Brother Clark. We'll try not to stay the rest of the afternoon, and, but, uh, you know, we, but I got one thing I want to say before we get started. I had the privilege of, of being with Sister Pauline's family to, a, a bunch this week as we seen her slowly leave this world and go to her heavenly award, reward. And I want to commend the family. Brother Clark, thank Paula, which is very much, I mean, I understand that. I mean, she, I don't know how it quite happened, but she became the head of the family somewhere along the line, and she's done a great job. But I want to commend all of y'all. There was not never a cross word, not never an angry moment. There never, Sister Pauline had two requests. She didn't want to be alone, and she didn't want to be in bad pain, and they seen to that, but they just loved on her, loved on each other, and it was just a blessing. It was a blessing to see, see what she had instilled in y'all and y'all exhibited this week. Uh, y'all had a good mother, but she, she left part of hers with y'all today. Uh, anyway, as we think about Sister Pauline, you know, she, uh, she lived her life in a way that we could all learn from. Like you heard Brother Clark say, uh, she, lived, she, she lived her, she walked by faith. She didn't walk by sight. She, her life wasn't perfect, and I don't know if there's ever been. I mean, Jesus lived a sinless life, but he had troubles and problems. He got tempted and all that. He had to pray. If he had to pray, how much more important it is for us to pray, you know? But you think, but she lived, she, she walked, no matter what the situation was, she knew that did not change her position in the family of God. She knew that she was a child of grace. She knew that she was a child of she, grace. Um, she has definitely, definitely been a good role model for her family, for her friends, for her church family. Uh, she, has, she has been there for us. And, and like, Brother Clark said, she, uh, she experienced some things in her walk with God that a lot of us had never experienced. I've heard several people tell me that, about dreams that she had told them about. Her young man told me when he joined the church that she told him that she had a dream the night before that he was drowning, I believe. I can't remember exactly what it is. And the next morning, he come and offered to the church. And he wasn't drowning no more. But this a lot of I mean, she got little glimpses of heaven. She got, and she could share those with you and tell you those things. You know, uh, you know, life. Like Brother Clark said, I mean, just examine the evidence. You know, I, you know, just the evidence that she's left behind. You know, I'm fully convinced that somewhere around seven thirty Friday night, 
she wasn't suffering no more. She, she left this old world to go home to that place that God had prepared for her. Jesus prepared that place for her on the cross of Calvary. He died so that we could have a home and we could have and spend eternity to with him. But her, like, like Russ Clark done told about half what I want told, and that's good. You know, but, uh, you know, but, but her eternal life did not start Friday afternoon at 7.30. Her eternal life, I didn't know about the earlier year, but she joined, like Russ Clark said, she joined the church in the early 70s. And she offered to the church and she followed God and being obedient to God and believers baptism and she was baptized and began her walk. Was it always a perfect walk? No. Ain't none of y'all done it. And she didn't either but, but she might have done a lot better than most of us. She done good. You know, she um, you know, just think of it. What Paul say? Absent from the body present with the Lord. When she took her last breath here and I know I I, I I'm just going to say this, and y'all can agree or disagree, because I don't know if we're going to be breathing in heaven or what. I ain't never been there yet. I got a hope of going there one day. But she took her next breath in heaven, at the, at the, at, gathered around the throne of Jesus. Uh, you know, I, I, they had been there all week. I come in the afternoon sometimes, spend a little time with them. You know, and they got all, and they kind of had got a little thin. So, Mommy, you no, know, because this thing was lingering on. I'm going to tell one thing on y'all, and I'm going to behave the rest of the time. You know, but they, all the daughter, uh, Paula's daughters come back up there and all, and somebody got hungry for ice cream. You know, and so they got up an ice cream order. And they went down to the Dairy Queen, got ice cream, and, and, and it all happened about the time they got back. You know, her time, she left this world. And uh, they were sitting around eating ice cream, and she was enjoying something far better. She loved ice cream, but she was eating some of the best. I, but, but the strange thing was, and I don't know, uh, Jennifer says she must have missed it or something, but there was one left over, like a heaven. But she didn't need that one from the Dairy Queen no more. She was eating something. She was eating something far better and far, I got that thing on silent, I thought. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, you know, she had picked up her cross and she had followed him long before. You know, she would be the first to tell you, you know, uh, it wasn't always easy. It wasn't always easy. But she would also be the first to tell you that just as Jesus promised that he would never leave you or never forsake you, that he did that. And he didn't, wasn't just with her on the good days. He was with her on the bad days. He was, you know, we, we seen her getting low. We seen her slipping away and getting low. But God was with her. And she left this world to go to that next, go to the, that next world. You know, she, uh, uh, I, can, I can't tell you a lot about those early years. Brother Clark told y'all some, and I've heard a lot, but that would be hearsay. And I want to just, like Brother Clark, examine the evidence and give an eyewitness report of what I've seen about this, this dear, precious uh, sister. And like I said, to know her was to love her, a child of God that walked by faith she had been blessed to experience those things we talked about, but thinking about, she loved, what, what, I, I'd go see her at the nursing home, and most of the time I would leave there, I felt like she'd done me more good than I'd done her. She had lifted me up, she had encouraged me, and she was in the nursing home, she was in the bed, she broke her hip and all this. And then what would I find her doing a lot of times? I'd find her reading her Bible. She was studying, what did the Bible say in Timothy? Studying to serve ourselves for proof. She was studying the word of God. Last time I went in there and she was able to be studying, she was studying Ephesians chapter 3. And boy, we had church right there. I mean, she was telling me things that she had read, and I'd tell her things that God had showed me. But she studied her Bible. She studied. She was being obedient to what God had told us to do, to study her word, study it. But she, she would talk about her family. She loved her children. She loved them. And she loved the ones that they married. She did not have in-laws and outlaws and all that stuff. Y'all was just more children. Y'all was just her babies. Y'all was her children. You know, and she in, in latter times, she told me a long time ago, and I didn't know about it, about little Freddie. But as the end got closer, she talked about it more. I think she was thinking about seeing him. And I know now she has seen him. You know, she's with him. Uh, but she would talk about her, her children and talk about him. She'd talk about her grandchildren. Grandchildren, she loved y'all. She loved y'all. Y'all, y'all, y'all was the, 
what kept her going in her old age. Y'all was the blessings of life to her, to see y'all and see y'all prospering in life and, and doing good and marrying and having children and going to church. Boy, that nothing made her no happier to know that y'all was going to church and being active in church and, and the ones y'all was marrying. And, the, and, and y'all think y'all special and y'all was. Y'all wasn't, y'all, the youngest wasn't quite what the grand youngest was and them great grand youngest, they was just tweeter and tweeter. I mean, she loved them great grandchildren. I had one of the picture hanging up in the room of holding uh, Riley's little girl. And she looked, uh, 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 what now? Lily. Lily. Uh, yeah, Lily. I'll be, that's the only thing I forget today, I'll be doing good. But, uh, but holding Lily, and she had a grin on from here to there. She was proud. She was proud to see her neck, that next generation. She was proud to see. And I can guarantee you, just like she prayed for her children and she prayed for her grandchildren and she prayed for, she's praying for those great grandchildren. From the, the last time, you know, you, I always enjoyed praying with her, but I always was a blessing to know that she was praying for me. You know, and I know we all got Jesus opened that. Well, we all got access to God. We all can pray to God. You know, the veil has been rent. But sometimes you just feel like some people might be a little bit closer than others. And she was one of them. And, you know, my, her, her, her line may not have been as long, but she, but she prayed a lot. She loved God. She loved to go to church. She loved the church. She loved, she, she loved the church that God had placed her in. She looked at one of the sad, there were three things in her life that was, that, that was sad for her. Number one is when they, she couldn't drive no more. That was sad. You know, you lose your freedom. I, I, I know that. I'm not looking forward to that day. I told Cherry to put my truck on from blocks and take the tires off and let me go out and just drive a while or something. But she lost her truck and she lost her, uh, her cell phone later on. She got where she couldn't use that no more. And then she lost being able to go to church and that was so sad. You know, she watched on Facebook for a while and she got where she couldn't run and ended up going to the nursing home. But Brother Clark was faithful to make CD recordings of the service, and she would listen to them over and over. Sometimes I'd go in there, and she'd be listening to something I was saying. I'd turn that thing off. <laughs> You're going to scare me, but she'd listen. She loved the singing. She loved the preaching. But you know what she loved? She loved the hugging. She loved, she loved the fellowship. She loved seeing everybody. Well, her, I, I remember a few times, and not many, and not many as I wish I did, go with mine picking her up and go with mine picking up Sister Christine Dry and let's go in the church. And they talk all the way to church. You know, I just wish sometimes we had a little longer to ride before we got home. Because they were telling you that about their life and about what God had done in their life and the walk that they, they had had, what the walk they had had with God. But she loved her church. She loved to study her Bible. She prayed. She was a praying woman. You know, but I tell you, we all, you know, you think about a preacher that sometimes, you know, I, I, hey, what's the best part about being a minister of the gospel is being able to see sometimes firsthand God, how he works in people's lives. You get, you know, but, uh, you know, that it, we're all called to be ministers of the gospel if we are a child of God. We all have been called to share the good news. And that good news is that Jesus came into this old wicked world and lived a sinless life and died on the cross and was buried in a tomb and on the third day he arose. And then and about 40 more days later after he was seen by all the 12 disciples and about 500 more people, he went, uh, ascended back up into the heaven and sitting at the right hand of the Father as we speak now making intercession for us. But like brother, that ain't the end of the story. We need to, what, when he ascended back up, the, the angels told him, well, well why, why, why y'all sat there stargazing, looking up in the heavens? The one that y'all seen leave is coming back again. And we need to live. She lived in that. She knew if God tarried that she would get to see the coming of her Savior come back. But she didn't. She knew it one way or the other. She was fixing to see him. But she lived in hope of that. But, uh, but she listened. She was, she was an encourager. She encouraged people. Now, I, I may do that once in a while, but I, I got a curse, and y'all pray for me. I'll see the bad side on things sometimes. And, 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 and I'll talk about it. She, did, I, she never talked about the bad. It was always uh, uplifting. It was always encouraging. Even, even, I mean, I went to see her in the hospital when she was having her, uh, her hip fixed and all, and I, and, and 
I mean, she was still being Sister Pauline, always a courage. You know, I, uh, if we think about her being a prayer, oh, 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 I know one thing. I know. She liked to cook, and she liked to bring food to church. And she, I, I'm going to mess up some of this, and y'all forgive me if y'all know what I'm talking about. But she made some syrup cookies sometime, and they was pretty good. She made pies and cakes and might have been coconut on both of them. I don't know. Brother Clark liked them coconut pies, and she'd make him one sometimes. She made a cookie and took two of them and put white cream in the middle and smashed them together. Oh, they was good. It was better than any Debbie pie you ever thought about seeing. She'd done that, and she loved it when people ate them and enjoyed it. That was, that was, that was ministering unto her. But I won't tell you. You get away from all that. Brother Clark always said, if you eat sweets first, you don't eat as much dinner, but there ain't no truth to that. But, uh, you know, but, but she could just flat out cook old country groceries. She comes, she knew how to take a little bit and make a lot. And I know, I know one time I had the privilege of going over and the whole bunch was there, and it's been several years ago, and she had a big old pot of oyster stew. And today I still remember that because it was good oyster stew. She could cook, she could, like I said, she could take a little and feed a lot. She loved to cook, though. Uh, I got, oh, I want to read this scripture, and I read, I've shared it with some of the, the family already, but sometime Thursday afternoon, Thursday night, or Friday, some of this scripture come to mind, and, and it said, and it's in Psalms 116, verse 15, precious, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of one of his saints. So, what we got to witness was precious in the sight of the Lord. But that next verse, it says, O Lord, truly I am thy servant, I am thy, I am thy servant, and the son of thy handmaiden. Thou hast loosened my bonds. Her bonds have been loose. She ain't, hey, she got out of the nursing home, y'all. She ain't there no more. She ain't sick no more. She can get around without a, 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 a rollator or a wheelchair. She don't need nobody to help her. She ain't no more, there ain't no more nursing homes where she is. There ain't no more hospitals where she is. There ain't no more tears. All the tears have been wiped away. I don't understand all that. I'm, hey, I was sitting there watching her and think, what is she seeing that we ain't getting to see yet? You know, we, all we got is that hope of one day that we may see that. She was getting to witness that, you know. No more tears. You know, you cry, you get mama's lap, and she can take them tears away, but they come back. Where she is, there ain't no more tears. They don't come back. No more sickness, no more heartache, no more funeral homes, no more funeral services, you know. No more of that kind of stuff. Anyway, I, I want to share this a little bit of scripture. And we got, oh, man. Uh, we got tightened up a little bit. And Second Corinthians chapter 4. Knowing, verse 14, knowing that he which raised up the Lord shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with him. If it wasn't for a risen Savior, this would not be a, ha a happy event today. We miss her, but we know there is life after death. That ain't the end. That's the beginning of eternity. And that same Lord that rose up Jesus, we know that, 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 that I mean, when, when she left this world, she, her body and soul went immediately to the presence of God. We're going to place this body, in this, this old shell here, this old tabernacle, this tent in the grave in a little while. But there's coming a day, like Brother Clark said, that, that she's going to come forth from that grave and that body and soul and spirit is going to be reunited into a glorified body. This is going to look like the body that Jesus had when the disciples was in that room, upper room, and the bam, they, he was there. He didn't have to unlock the door. He didn't have to come through the window. He was just there. It's just like on the Mount of Transfiguration. It said Jesus shined. He, he's so bright. He shined like, like the whitest of whites. He's so bright. Shining. That's, the, he, that's a glorified body. But anyway, I, I want to get a few more of these verses and we'll quit. For all things are for your sakes that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many rebound to the glory of God. It's all for God's glory. I told the family back there, 
pray, 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 pray that God would get the glory. God got the glory for this life. God got the glory for the family she raised. Give God the glory. If something happened good and, and it brings glory, give God the praise. It ain't about man. It ain't about woman. It's about God. The one that created him. We are the created. She is the God is the creator. We are the created. Uh, verse 16, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish. We watch that. It was perishing away. That outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Renewed. It says, for our light of affliction, which is but for a moment. And I'm sure she thought hers lasted longer than a moment. Moment? What's a moment? A minute, we know how long it is. In, in an hour, we know how long it is. A day, but, but, but for a moment, we suffer those light afflictions. Worketh for us a more exceedingly and eternal weight of glory. Uh, Romans 8, 18 says, For I reckon. I sound kind of like Hoboken language, don't I? You know, for I reckon, Paul said, that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared to with the glory which shall be revealed. It don't is. You know what she's saying now? It's worth it after all. It's worth it after all. You know, it, God. I mean, we just just hold on. The God. The God. God don't go nowhere. We drift and wander and all that. But, but He's there. He said He'll never leave. Anyway, while we look not. At the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. She was seeing them eternal things. I believe that. I believe she was getting the glory. We pray, God, come get her. Come take her home. Make her, make her, make her transition smooth. Make it easy. Send your angels. Wrap her up and on. And, 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 and there was a sister there at the nursing home, uh, Sister Janet was sitting there holding her hand, didn't even realize it. Paula got her daughter's attention, and she sighed that last breath. You know, we don't know what she was seeing. You know, we're just glad that she wasn't suffering no more. Uh, bear with me just a minute, and I'll, I'll try to be quick. For we know, this is chapter 5, for we know that if our earthly house, her earthly house, that old tent, that old tabernacle, Oh, we like it. We try to keep it. We try to exercise a little bit and keep it, you know, because we, you know, I don't necessarily want to live on and on, of course, but I want to enjoy the time I got. But it's temporal. It's temporary. It ain't. I mean, I used to have hair on my head and all that kind of stuff. It ain't hardly there no more. Things change. But he said, for we know that our earthly house of this tabernacle, if it were dissolved, we have a building of God. He ain't talking about that building that Jesus was talking about going to build a home for. That ain't what he's talking about. He's talking about that glorified body. That's that home that he has prepared for us. You know, that, 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 that we have a building of God and house not made with hands. Not temporal, but it says eternal in heaven. Gonna last for we can't understand that. Y'all can, y'all talk to me afterward. Help me understand. I can't understand eternal. You know, we sang a song about we've been there ten thousand years, only just begun, but that don't even that ain't the nip of, that's that's just the tip of the iceberg, you know. On and on and on. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. Ready, ready. Ready for that name. You know, I, 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 I share, I won't share this, but you know me, I ain't got, I don't know when to shut up too good, but uh, I remember when I was a young man praying, God, when my time comes to die, help me be ready. You know what I'm praying now? Help me be like Sister Pauline. Help me be like, she set an example for me what, when they're in them times, what you do. You know, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so, be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. That's talking about being dead. She was saying, and, 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 and I ain't the first to say this, but I'll say it. She's more alive now than she's ever been. She's more alive now than she's ever been. You know, this, this is what she has 
had visions and dreams about. This is what she had been promised, you know. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan. We groan and moan. We get sick. We, get, we break a bone. You know, we groan and we moan. We, we groan. Being burdened. Not for that we would be unclothed. Not that we would, you know, I don't know nobody. You know, we, we don't, the, the dying ain't what we look forward to. That's just the transformation to here to there, you know. But to be clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up in life, you know, swallowed up in life. Now, he that has wrought us for the self same thing is God, who also have given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. That's the down payment, that Holy Spirit that he give us on the day of our salvation that comes. There ain't no more tabernacle. Ain't, we don't know. He lives with inside our hearts now, and he wants to guide us and direct us, you know, Sometimes we won't, we won't take the control back, but I, I've made enough messes. I, let, let, let him have it. Let him, let him lead and God follow him. But verse 6, therefore, I'm, I'm just about through, I promise. Therefore, we are always confident. Are you always confident? But we are, a child of God ought to always be confident, knowing that while as we are at home in this body, we are absent from the Lord. We know there's something better. We know, although I walk through the valley of shadow of a death. He didn't say, you know, I stay in the valley of the shadow of a death. That's, death is just the means that God's used to us to get to our heavenly reward. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and rather willing to be absent from this body and to be present. Present with the Lord. One more verse. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent we may be accepted. I lost my place. Accepted of him. Accept. Live a life that's pleasing unto God. Live a life that brings glory and honor to our Lord. He's the one that knew no sin that became sin for us. He took our place on the cross of Calvary. I should have been hung there. You should have been hung there because he had never done nothing wrong. But he died not for some of my sins, for each one that God had given him. He died for all their sins. And, 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 and what did he say on the cross? It is finished. He had done all. That. Can you say that? Sister Pauline could say that, but I don't know if I can. But Jesus had done all that the Father had given him to do. Given him, and, and it was all. It wasn't for his glory and his honor. It was for the honor of God. You know, that's why God created you, if you ever wondered, where your life and your actions and your deeds could bring honor. And he wants you to fellowship with him. He wants you to spend time, read his word, spend time in prayer. You know, spend time, just like you like your youngest and your grand youngest to come see you. God likes his children to come spend a little time with him. Uh, I deem my life better, first off, by our Lord in heaven and the finished work of Jesus Christ. But I feel like my walk with God in much has been made a little sweeter. I don't I'll say it that way, a little sweeter because of knowing this dear sister. Some call her mama, some call her granny. She gets called granny a lot. I call her sister. And I want to tell you, I got a good mom, and I'm not complaining, but this, this has been a second mama to me. I was blessed to have two mamas, you know, and I'm thankful for the life she's lived, and I'm thankful God let our paths cross, and I'm thankful that I got to be her pastor. That was probably, that, you know, in, in my short ministry, that's been one of the highlights of my ministry, is being able to minister and, and be her pastor. We love y'all, and uh, we uh, fixing to go now to the cemetery for the committal service. Oh, I remember now. Riley, you posted to remind me. Let's have a word of prayer in closing. Father God, we thank you. We always want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for Sister Pauline. We thank you, Lord, that she's not suffering no more, Lord, that she's enjoying what you've all you told us about all this time, Lord, that she's enjoying that place, Lord, that, that 
where there is no more heartaches and no more tears, no more sin, no more crying, Lord. And, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you be with this family and comfort them, strengthen them, be with us through the furtherance of the service. And, Lord, forgive us, forgive us where we fail you, Lord. And in Jesus' dear precious name we pray, amen.